But what was the thing? You know, they used Bernie to, Mac. Yeah, was he, uh, hoo-ha! The movie was something three hundred. This is Sparta. Three thousand was was the late great Bernie Mac. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. I was gonna say like Bernie Mac's not in this close. one. It was close. <laughs> I don't think he was in Sparta. Oh yeah, baby, that was a good one. That that was an all timer right there. That you was like almost that. as good as Matt the W. That's as, number one without a close second. Without a, well, this one's up there. Bernie Mac okay. in 300 is <laughs> definitely here. Little different, just slightly different. See, Dif- see what happens when you add one zero or subtract one see? zero. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And you got to see 300 because you haven't seen that yet, have you? No. No. You need to see 300. Is it, is it old? Is it new? Uh, it's it's older now. It's probably okay. been like seven, eight years. Probably they've come out with a second one, but it's good. You Get, need to see it. Can I watch it with my sons? Uh, of course. I mean, yeah. it's 2021. I mean, they're okay. Okay with seeing somebody's head get chopped off, aren't they? <laughs> I think what's okay at my house might not be. <laughs> yes, you're right. It's not. It's not the difference. same. Difference. It is a difference. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I'm. Uh, I'm more like the like. Hey, kids. Uh, yeah, watch this. The real world. Grow up. <laughs> what was the rated R plus 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 one that oh, you would let your kids I, I, watch? I let my little boy watch Django. Yes, right, unchanged. Yeah, yes, yeah. yes. I get quite the reaction from parents when I tell that. <laughs> it had it all in that the Violence, one. the language, the message. Yes, and nudity. The, it, just, it had everything. It hit for the inappropriate cycle. Yeah, it definitely did. It yeah. definitely did. Yes, I'm not exactly the model citizen or model parent, uh, but I'm okay. Hand raised here. We accidentally kind of yeah. wore the all black today. We're twinsies. I made a mistake. A lot of times I will have you and Mike on in the morning. Yeah, you're right. To listen to you, and I can also take a peek. I'm like, okay, I'm not going to wear that. Right. Didn't okay. do it today. Don't worry. Do I don't care ever. I'm not I'm not worried about it. I mean, you should have wore black pants, and then I know. you really could have done it. I know. Black on black, man. Come on. I went gray. Yeah. Next time. You're, it's all right. You're still one of the coolest 50-year-olds <laughs> I know, dress-wise, without a doubt. As long as I can get you to say that to start each show. We'll now see. the show can start. If you start doing more 300, 3,000 in Matha W, <laughs> that's going to go out the door. Okay, so what's up, everybody? It's Chris Sims on Button. Paul Burmeister here, Chris Sims. And as always, we are sponsored by Under Armour. The only way is through. We are supported by Under Armour. Just like us, Under Armour wants to give you an edge. They are focused on performing better and taking their game to the next level. Everything from running shoes that propel you forward to hoop shoes that give you insane grip. And Steph Curry looked good last night Mm. in game one against the Lakers. They even make hoodies that reflect the energy. We're not just about the end result, winning or glory. Under Armour is about that hard work. Yeah, we're about that hard work too. The dedication, the cycle of training, competing, and recovering. We give you advantages, but not shortcuts. Mm. The only way. Is through. Bam. There we go. Nice job there. A Thank couple you. of things stand out there, Chris. Number one, it's yeah. not easy to do a read and kind of be yourself, like come in and out of different parts of yourself when you read and then when you're when you're riffing. Thank you. They were very similar. Thank you very much. Together. And you worked in a little here and now with yeah. Steph Curry. Hey, thanks a lot, man. Goddamn I'm trying. Pro. I'm trying. I'm trying to get there, man. Yeah. Between hanging out with you and Ahmed, I mean, I, I've got well, some pro stuff rubbing off on me. Not the Florio. Good stuff. I'm not counting him in that <laughs> Discord discussion. <laughs> he would do that well. He, he'd also find a way to put in a little snark oh definitely somewhere. definitely no doubt the right? snarkiest man alive right there <laughs> it, it looks like we're starting out with a, a bunch of defense yeah a lot today. of defense looking back at the weekend uh, yeah a lot of defensive stuff that i think was interesting that kind of changed at least the way i look at teams and i think the way we should all look at teams kind of moving yeah. forward to go hey this has changed about them and this is why they're a complete team or a special team and nonetheless it is a what the f- wednesday by the way yes it is i think that? i said that but i'm not sure but Repeat i'm glad it. to hear yeah. you say it okay yeah how about the afc Big game in the AFC. Should yeah. we start there? Yeah, let's do that. All right, Baltimore hammers the L.A. Chargers 34-6. to Anytime a defense holds that offense to one touchdown right. and gives Justin Herbert his worst game of the season, second worst game of his career, I think it's worth a closer look. No, no doubt about it. I mean, the Ravens you know, continue to amaze me. And I think uh, Wink Martindale, defensive coordinator, he's a guy that I want to pay respect to because mm. I think he should be in head coaching discussions this year when jobs and that, that whole conversation starts. You know, he's just so smart. He's so creative. And I think that's what jumped out to me more than anything. You know, they they create the illusion of pressure maybe better than anybody in football. Look, we got all these guys here. You don't know who's going to blitz. Oh, stop only, right there. Right. I mean, that, that is such a compliment because you, you can look at the numbers that we think matter. And Baltimore's like, huh. Yeah. If they're number one at creating the illusion of pressure, which yeah. confuses the quarterback. Right. 
That's a hell of a defense. I, I think they are. And I, I think that's why, you know, it's been a little bit of a work in progress. I think they've had to figure out who they're going to be, you know, this year. Had some of those injuries we talked about early on in the year. And they've had to kind of readjust. But I think he's kind of found his mojo for what it works for this team this year. That's awesome. And not, you know, of course, hey, they're big. And they're more dominant than I was even expecting early on in the year where I'm going, oh, the big guys are, you know, they're starting to play and pop. But the, the illusion of the, the pressure and then it ultimately being a four-man pressure, but you still get a guy free or still create pressure on the quarterback with just four people, I think what separates them. And I think I've seen that a lot for a lot of the good defenses in football right now. That's what they've mastered a little bit. Yep. Offenses do too much stuff right now for us to be always going pressure, 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 pressure. So you got to create mismatches, you know, stress the protection plan a little bit and see if you can find ways to do that with a lesser amount of people, and Baltimore is one of the kings of that for sure. Well, what they did, and we're going to find out the way yeah. they did it, certainly right. opened eyes because the Chargers had been either in the 20s, the 30s, even the 40s last week against Cleveland Definitely. offensively in all right. their games, and now they hit only six. Uh, so let's hit some specific examples. Let's yeah. start out. Okay, cool. Uh, we have second quarter here. Chargers trailing 14 nothing, facing fourth and three right. on their own 39. Listen, and you know, there's a lot of plays to go through here, but I think these, this play kind of just encompasses what we're talking about, you know, right off the bat. Yeah, Chargers are down 14 nothing, you know, and I'd already seen it a number of times during the game where it's, whoa, a lot of people at the line of scrimmage. Well, they drop out. It's a four-man rush. It's seven-man coverage, right? And then, oh, when they do bring that fifth man, Paul, they do find a, a way to, let's see, br bring five, but they still play some sort of two-deep coverage behind it to, like, hey, we blitzed, but we're not, like, going crazy and just going to let you throw some bomb on us easy. And then they might have two guys just floating in the middle, reading eyes and doing, doing that type of stuff. Now, here, I mean, look at this. Look at this. I mean, you're playing quarterback. Anybody plays Madden, watches football. I mean, look, it's one, it's two, it's three, it's four, it's five, it's six, it's seven, it's eight. You go, I don't know who can come. Unless you know, they're only bringing three. It, 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 right. Or, yeah. they, or they could do that, too. Yes. And here you go. You got a guy, the safety over here, over the slot, who kind of unlocks some of these people. And you go... If you're Justin Herbert, you're going, okay, right now it looks like it's going to be an all-out pressure, an all-out blitz, and I'm just going to look for a one-on-one -on -one hot throw or try to get it out of my hand here and play matchup football. But I think what's cool about it, and as we're going to show here, I mean, as there we go. I mean, look, look what we're seeing here. I mean, again, safety dropping out, right? So right at the snap, he knows the snap count. They've held it for a long time. Look, we might blitz, we might blitz. And now they're already getting into, eh, we're not going to blitz. There's going to be coverage here, okay? And then added to that, let's see. So now we got Deshaun Elliott out. We got a weak side backer out over here. We got one, two, three, four rushers. And yes, there's a Jimmy Smith fifth, but he's not really rushing. He's not. He's kind of like... If Austin Eckler blocks, I'll come. But if it looks like he can be uh, going out in some sort of ra route or combination like that, he'll, he'll take him as well. And you can see he kind of like pauses. He's kind of waiting to see, like, what's Austin Eckler doing? Okay, he's good. If Austin Eckler went out the other side, then Harrison would have been there to watch him. But, again, like the illusion of, whoa, it's a crazy blitz, but yet ultimately there ends up being a guy here for that, a guy, anything under, underneath, they had that covered. You could see here there's a guy in front of the slant route. And now he's thinking, because it's an all-out blitz, let me throw my one-on-one -on -one matchup out here to Marlon Humphrey. And, you know, Marlon Humphrey's pretty damn good. There's a lot of pushing and shoving going on, certainly. But that's, that's a 50-50 matchup. And right. I, I don't necessarily – agree with that you know as far as uh taking that decision there first of all humphrey yeah. turned around and found the ball i see so often guys aren't doing that yeah now. well so he's, a special, he's yeah. a special player he's a special player let's bring it back to the yeah. snap all, right. all the way back keep it coming yep. back 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 to okay right here yeah so hit pause so Justin Herbert right now, is, he's kind of taking inventory. He talked about what Chris just mentioned. I don't know if they're bringing seven or eight. Yep. One thing he probably thinks he knows is that two yards off the ball is that safety up the top there. Who is that right now? Yeah, right here, Deshaun Elliott. Okay, right he's, here. he's only two yards off the tackle box. Right, right. And I guarantee you right now he's not thinking, okay, he's fallen back to play his half in no, the zone. No, definitely not. No. That's an illusion. It's an illusion. Exactly right. So not only are you now think about the quarterback, he's going set hut, oh, wait. I thought I was going to be blitz, and they're, they're, I'm okay, so I have nobody coming free, 
but you've taken your eyes off downfield to a degree, and now you got to get up and go, wait, well, so what exactly, What what's the coverage here? Right. And, and that's, 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 yeah. where, that's where Baltimore is really good. You know, they create this – confusion and chaos for the quarterback and the quarterback kind of has to be able to talk to himself and be like oh, relax here <laughs> it's a lot of illusion it's a lot of moving parts but ultimately it's going right. to be four let me see if I can maybe read the concept here and take a, a, a three-person route as compared to just playing the one-on-one -on -one matchup because I thought I was going to get an all-out blitz right and that's where they do a really good job of making life hard on quarterbacks for sure it feels to me like quarterbacks now in the last decade they, they're like okay the line of scrimmage I've got to get myself comfortable with I probably I'm not going to know who's coming with these looks I'm not going to know no, if no. it's three or if it's six but I can look out there and think that safety isn't going to get back right and that's I mean he, he's probably not trying to figure out how many are coming but he's likely going, you know what, okay, it's not going to be a too deep because there's no way in hell that safety is getting all the way back exactly there right. from two yards off the ball. Right, no, I think that's exactly the point. You're right. So there's a, there's a lot of unknowns before the snap when you play Baltimore, and that's what you continue to see week after week after week. And, you know, like I said, when they do blitz, they do a pretty good job of – protecting themselves to a degree where, okay, yeah, you might hit a pass play. Great, we blitzed, we took a chance, but you only got seven or eight yards, and we didn't get gashed for 40 or 50, and it doesn't change the football right. game. And that's where I think Wink Martindale is really awesome, let alone, you know, he can create looks like this sometimes, and now they think it's an all-out blitz, right? And we got here, we got all these guys in the box that are potentially able to blitz, and you think, okay, let me slide the line this way because they might bring everybody over here. And what he'll do is end up going like, yeah, one guy's over here, and then there's two guys here, and then there's three guys here, and they might bring a fourth off the edge who gets totally scot-free just because – you protect it against, oh, wait, they're going to blitz over here or blitz over there, and they find ways to stress your protection as good as anybody in football. I think that's one of the really impressive things about them. Go but, ahead. yeah, you want to go to the next play? Say, go ahead and let this one play yeah, out. Yeah, let it play one out. Marlon Humphrey does a great job. I mean, like you said, I wouldn't I, – that would not be my choice. Marlon Humphrey gets asked to do more than any other corner in football. I mean, you just – all you need to do if you want to watch what he does for this team. Oh, big moment. Mike Williams got to cover him. Oh, big moment. This formation, they decided we want you to cover Jared Cook. Big moment of the game. Oh, big moment. We want you to now be man-to-man -man on Austin Eckler out of the backfield. I mean, he gets matched up and put in the toughest spots, maybe in all of football. Mm -hmm. And I hear people in Baltimore sometimes like think he's overpaid, and I just go, <laughs> no, he's not. He's phenomenal. He's going to lose some of these matchups because he gets put in the spot where a lot of guys, you couldn't even ask them to be in that spot. Let's go ahead and take it to the next play. Yeah. Some similarities here, except this one comes in the, let's see, what? oh, it's the next drive. It's so it's right drive. after it. Yep. It's another fourth down, yep. and it's going to be another incompletion here for Herbert. Yeah, well, yeah, I think it's. I think it might have been two drives later, right, either way. Um, into the third quarter into now. Into the third quarter, yeah. yeah. But, but either way here, and let me just make sure I got this right. We got fourth and one. You saw that little pre-snap here. And, again, most of the day to this point, with these looks, it's been some sort of four-man pressure and then a lot of dropping out. I mean, a lot. It's just whatever, however you want to say it. So to this point, you know, they've played a game where now Justin Herbert's going, wait, don't, don't, don't panic here. They've shown this a lot, and they drop out. We're going to be okay. We're going to be okay. And what they do to you now is they throw, oh, they throw the curveball. This is their curveball. So now, now he's thinking, maybe I got enough time or whatever. And Baltimore's gone, you know what? In the big moments, we've dropped out. We've dropped out. We've dropped out. And now they throw the curveball, and it's one, two, three, four, five, six guys coming. And they might even add a seventh. Uh, they do. They add a seventh here with, with the middle linebacker, Bynes. And, you know, again, now it's like, oh, wait, I got to really get this ball out of my hand here. This is a real issue. And you can see here, he's got at the top of the screen. I can't remember, number five. What the, what the hell is number five's name? I'm blanking on his name. But, but he, he decides to go, again, to go back to the one-man cut here. Josh Palmer. Josh Palmer, that's who it is, exactly right, from Tennessee. And, you know, this is just a missed throw. But to me, and again, it's not about this play specifically. I'm just trying to show the broader theme of the, what the Baltimore Ravens do and the fact that you just don't know what to expect from them at any given time. And I think that's what makes them a really good defense. And for a team that doesn't have really 
a big time pass rusher, this is the things you do to create pressure. And yeah, this time was the all out blitz and it's just not a good throw. But again, at the same time, I want to go. I, I bet you the fact that they brought the blitz affected Justin Herbert a little bit this time. Yeah, he was and made him rush sure. the throw, yeah. right? Where he was thinking, wait, they're going to drop. I'm going to have four guys take your time on the throw. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh, shit, the guy off the edge did come. He's free. So, uh, again, the, the, broader, the broader point with Baltimore's defense is keeping you on edge. They do a masterful job of getting pressure with four man pressures, even though it looks like that more at the snap. And then they're getting better and better at being sticky in coverage here. But, I, you know, again, the, the, the thing I would say here once again is, uh, I, I would not advise doing going after this matchup again. Humphrey again. No, yeah. definitely not. And, you know, here to the concept side. See, now this one, I think he doesn't even think concept because he's probably thinking they're going to drop out. They're going to drop out. So I'm going to have people underneath. I'm going to have people underneath here in some capacity to where these routes aren't going to work. But as you see here, as he drops back, I mean, he kind of has the tight end. He kind of has Keenan Allen on the little short post. I think it's better options to go here rather than playing the Marlon Humphrey matchup. Hey, he missed his throw. He usually makes right. it. Right. But he was off all game. Mm -hmm. And I think he was off all game just because mentally he does, you don't feel comfortable playing Baltimore. Right. You don't. I mean, I can say I've been there. I've been in those shoes. I played Baltimore once in my life. And I just remember thinking, like, man, I messed some basic stuff up. Because there was so much movement and they were showing this to where I wanted to go, gosh, I mean, uh, uh, if I made this call, we would have protected it. And I make that call 99 or 100 times out of 100. But because it was Baltimore and all the different stuff they do, you start to mess up basics is, is the broader point I guess I'm trying to make here. Every week we've done this last three seasons, there's a different flavor. There, there are different yeah. kind of details. Right. But the one thing that is has come through defensively, what you're looking for and what we've found really makes a quarterback, whether he's an average quarterback look poor or a really good quarterback look average, it's that deception. It's the hesitation where you get sped up and rushed that leads to a bad day more than anything else. I think so. I, I think that, that to a, me is the way to go. Very good example you, of it right there. It goes back to our old conversation of like, yeah, you can be really basic if you want, but you better be super, super talented. Yeah. You better be super talented because this day and age, when quarterbacks know the defense, I don't, you know, you got to be the 49ers of 2019. You got to be the Seahawks of 2013 to pull that off. And that's just, they don't come around often. Right. So if you don't have that, then you got to do something schematically to kind of throw these offensive coordinators and the quarterbacks off kilter a little bit because, hey, they got answers for everything on the offensive side of the ball this day, this day and age, and especially with coach to quarterback communication. You can call three plays in the huddle. Uh, that 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 changes things. Hey, anytime Justin Herbert after the game, you can look down. He's thrown for less than 200 yards, and he's the team's leading rusher. Those are two really really bad domination signs for domination. The exactly right the potential domination. Yeah, I want to glimpse at the other side real quick. The yeah. Ravens they put up 34 points. Uh, they have been playing very very well on that side of the ball. Right, a lot of questions about them preseason. It's obvious Lamar is better. Yes. I'd like a little more nuance and detail there on what you think he's specifically doing better. Yeah. Well, first off, I mean, I just think he's more consistent throwing the football. That's for sure. We've talked about it like his base. Like, again, if anybody wants to just watch Lamar turn on film from last year to this year and how many times, you know, oh. now he's always here. It's always boom, boom, boom. I mean, he used to get into this position yep. where his legs would be close. And, he, and he, you know, he would miss throws, certainly. He's become a better decision maker. I think that's the first thing, too. And uh, I think the way they're calling the game's a little bit different. I do. i got to give Greg Roman some respect. Like, hey, we know they can run the ball. They were dominant in this game running the ball. I mm -hmm. mean, they just pushed around the Chargers. But the other thing they make you do, and I'm con continuing to see the offense a little bit grow in this way, is play action pass and aggressive downfield. So they're stressing you to defend the whole field. They're like, well, shit. We'd like to put up people up in the box, but shit, they throw a lot of deep balls. And he, they're looking to, like, strike with Hollywood Brown and Mark Andrews on 30-yard crossing routes. Like, they're not looking to dink and dunk. So that puts a lot of stress on the defense, especially with the way they run the ball and can overpower you up front. And I think with that, he very rarely misses those throws right now. He's taking advantage of all that's there to be had. And I think the other thing, too, is when the defense takes it away, he's not like, well, this was a shot play. I got to take my shot. He's very patient and goes through the progression 
and very good to go, okay, nothing was there, going to check it down. But damn, they're all 20, 30 yards downfield. Look at that check down. It's a 10-yard gain. So that's where he's gotten really good. Or the other thing he used to do is play action pass. We're going to take a shot, and it's not there. And then he would look to scramble. And now, to me, he's more patient with letting the play develop and, like I said, checking it down if it's not there. And then, okay, if i got to scramble after all that said and done, then I'll do it. And that's, to me, where his game's gone to a little bit of a different level. Really good observations there in Lamar. And I think we also have to compliment Greg Roma, the offensive Definitely. coordinator, for the 100%. way he's – cut and pasted and kind of found a way to have he the has. effective He's running game. and found it the right way. Latavius right. Murray, Devontae Freeman, Le'Veon Bell, all on the back nine of their career. Yeah. But anytime they can go 26 carries for 122, I mean, that that is, that's finding a way. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. And like, you know, again, those guys are good running backs, but they're, they're not superstars right. at this point in their career. You know, I think, the, you know, you look at those yards and they go, hey, those, those are good holes. They're making, they're, they're moving people. And I'm not trying to disrespect those guys, but it's, it is about the blocking and the schemes Greg Roman, you know, delivers. And he does a great job of what I always call checks and balances. Like, okay, yeah, here's two pulling guards. We're two pulling guards to the right, two pulling guards to the right. Yeah, we ran that a few times. And now it's two pulling guards to the right, and there goes Devin Duvernay on a speed sweep to the left. So you can't overplay us with the two pulling guards. Or, you know, he fakes it to the running back and the two pulling guards go one way and now Lamar goes the other way with a receiver leading him out on the edge to block it. So he's got, like, answers to keep you honest. And I think that's what's real important about their offense, too. And you just explained what they've done, and I can define it as they have self-scouted themselves. Yeah, I, I mean, I think so yeah, to a degree. Really well. No doubt about it. It doesn't need to be complicated as long as you got the right curveballs off the, you know, your, your fastballs. All right, let's go to another defense that's coming off an awesome mm. outing. Arizona beating Cleveland 37-14. to We know Kyler is – playing at an MVP kind of level. Yep. We can talk about him in a bit if you'd like to. Right. But I, I'd like to learn about this Arizona defense yeah. in yeah. these next few minutes. I know they're playing well, right. but I feel like most of the Arizona focus has been on, boy, this offense is great. I know. I want, I want to know about this defense. Yeah. Um, got some studs, okay? I mean, first off, and I think you and I have talked about that, talked about that a little bit, just as far as pure athletic specimens. At all three levels. At all three levels, really. You know, and one area where I might have questioned them a little bit was, like, the interior part of their defense. But, like, with Jordan Phillips being in there and then this Lee Kai uh, Fotu, I, I think I said it right, another big defensive tackle. You know, when those two were healthy and playing together, it adds another element to, like, oh, yeah, you want to be big and try to run the ball? Well, good luck moving those two big yeah. Okay? And yeah. I, again, say that respectfully. But – I, I would say I would argue it's the three fastest linebackers in football when you put them on the field. Isaiah Simmons, Jordan Hicks, Zayvon Collins, and it's two of them got great size. Jordan Hicks maybe a little smaller, but I mean he could fly. So you got that. And then we've talked about Buda Baker and Byron right. Murphy. So they really got a little bit of everything, let alone a creative scheme to go along with it. And they're not afraid to take chances and be creative. And the big thing to me in this game more than anything was and I know that Browns tackles weren't playing. I'm, I'm fully aware of that. But when the Browns got in their running sets where they're like – Which is a lot. It's a lot. It's what, that's where they make their bread and butter. We're two tight ends. We're three tight ends. One receiver. We're going to bring it at you. Callahan's got a million different running schemes. They're maybe the most well-coached offensive line in football. Arizona was just like, no, we're going to die another death today if we're going to die. We're not going to let that kill us. You're not going to just smash it down our face to where now we have to just change everything in our game plan. And not everybody can pull off what Arizona does. But Arizona, long story short, forced Cleveland to get into a game a little bit. They don't want a shotgun. We're going to take you out of this. You're not going to pull guards inside, outside zone and dominate us that way. And they did it with just sheer numbers, too. So they just went, hey. Yep, you're in that set. That's great. Here's nine guys yeah. all within five yards of the line of scrimmage, and we're coming downhill too. Yeah, We're not going to sit there and wait and let you drive us off the ball, and that to me was one of the big things of the game. Let's take a look at a point of the game here, Chris. Early second quarter, 1445 left, where Cleveland's still thinking that they could – get into their dominant run selves. It's right. only 14 to nothing right yeah, here. Yeah, right. Well, listen, I got a problem with Kevin Stefanski going forward on fourth and three after the first drive. They're down seven nothing. All right, I just want to say this. And people like, well, I, it's because analytics has become a hot topic, especially for me and Flurry on PFT. You know, it, I, 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 don't, I don't like those decisions. You're down seven nothing. You're on, you're on the 10-yard line and it's fourth and three. Kick the field goal and make it a 7-3 football game. 
Kick the, give your team some positive energy. You got no offensive tackle. You know, now instead you give the other team energy and go, whoa, we made a stop. Yeah. And your defense is coming on the field like, damn, we didn't come away with any points there. And that's where numbers and analytics can't help out. I'm sorry to get off topic there. <laughs> now let's go back to the Arizona defense. All right. So here we go. Three tight end set, Paul. They love doing this yeah. stuff. They love it. Works well for you them. You know, one tight end, two tight end. Here's another tight end. And then what they want to do is go like, hey, we got one receiver out here. Do you really want to leave us one-on-one -on -one out there? And with Byron Murphy, they're not necessarily afraid, but they keep the single safety back here shaded towards that one receiver to where they, the corner can feel protected. But the real point of this is this. I mean, again, I know we got we – got, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then a ninth guy on the edge of the box to where, you know, again, Cleveland's a really good running team, but when you got size and speed at the on a defense with this many people at the line of scrimmage, I, I just don't care who you are. It's going to be hard to do it against a talented defense. So they really called their bluff in this in this department, in my opinion, and here he is. You know, Baker Mayfield, he's check. you know, you saw him get up. He goes, check, check, check. I am guessing, you know, off of alignment. And let's let me rewind it so everybody can see this here a little bit. You know, you see Baker right here, right? Baker gets up, puts the hands out, check, 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 right? He's doing that. Probably had some sort of run play, I'm guessing, down here. But the linebackers are kicked over. Isaiah Simmons on the end of the line of scrimmage. He doesn't like that number. That those numbers there, so he goes check, 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 so they can run the ball up here somewhere. There's not a great advantage there either, but they do have the numbers advantage. All right. Now within that, like Vance Joseph is, you know, no idiot. Okay, he's got people coming off the edge here because all right. First thing is you see all the people at the line of scrimmage, but he's got people coming off the edge on the weak side because he goes wait, they're great zone cutback team. I'm gonna take that away. And you even see Hicks, he's kind of hanging out back, back around here. But they just kind of took it to the Browns with the sheer numbers and the athleticism to where you can see here at the front side on the top here. I mean, they're getting pushed back. There's no, they're not winning anything there. And Arizona's shooting gaps and coming downhill at such a capacity that this was kind of the theme every time they got in these formations throughout the game where it was just like, hey, that's, that's great. I like it. You know, sure, try to run the ball with two and three tight ends. But, you know, they were going to come downhill and be aggressive and, and slow down the run game and, and scare them with just with the sheer numbers where an offensive coordinator is going to sit there and go, man, I'd like to run it, but it, it's going to be tough. They're good. They got talent. And they just got more people there to block than we do. So we're a little compromised that way. And they kind of scared the Browns out of the running game for, for, for that standpoint, at least in these type of formations. Well, at least Kareem Hunt got two yards there. Next drive, we pick it up, Chris. It's now 17 nothing, and Hunt's not even going to make it back to the line of scrimmage here. No, he's not. And, and again, here's similar similar thing here, right? We got two tight end sets and, and a fullback. And so we got one tight end, two tight end, fullback, running back, there's Odell. Same type of look, really, right? It's one-on-one -on -one with Byron Murphy. The safety's cheating over there, so he's going to help out on Odell. And, again, it's eight guys with a nine guy. That's, yes, he's going to be worried about in David Njoku if he comes out. But he's, he's been taught all week to we're going to get downhill if we see the run, and he's right on the edge of the box, right? But, you know, what I really want you to see, first off, is just like, Look at, the, look at the fast flow of the linebackers. I should have pointed this out a little bit more on the last play. Where it's like they knew the play before It's it like came. they know the play, yeah. and they almost play it like a running back to where they go, wait, if we see a hole, we're going to run through the hole. We got people for every gap here, so what do we, we don't have to worry. If I see a hole, there's a good chance the running back's going to be trying to run through that hole. And you see here, I mean, it's totally overwhelmed on the front side. I mean, there, there's no chance. I mean, they're, they're winning almost every matchup to a, at least a stalemate. And now you got this crew pursuing and coming downhill, the three linebackers we just talked about, who all have size and physicality in Simmons, Collins, and, and Hicks. And there's just there's no chance. And the good thing, too, is they always, like, 
You know, and here's my man Jordan Phillips, who's a big dude. He's hard to move. But the other thing, too, is, you know, they always had a good job of, like, slanting the backside, right, to make sure, like, hey, if you think you're going to get a cutback lane or anything like that, we're going to have guys there. That's just not going to happen. And as you see, like you said, I mean, there's no chance in this Jeez. play. There's yeah. nothing. There's absolutely nothing. There's nowhere he can go. People are losing the one-on-one -on -one battles, let alone the guys at the second level are coming down and, cr and clogging holes. And then he's got, you know, Kareem Hunt has nowhere to go. At the point of attack, it looks like Arizona's playing with 12 guys and Cleveland's playing with 10. No, it, it looked like that. Like, that, that's where I go back to, like, again, I know they didn't have their tackles. But these three inside, that's the starting three. Treader, Bentonio, and uh, Wyatt Teller. They're as good an interior three as you want. They lost the battles, too, Big in time. this game. They yeah. did. And that doesn't happen much either. Now, here's one other thing I just want to point out. I'm almost 100% sure this is supposed to be a reverse. <laughs> All right? Somebody. I don't know why he doesn't give the ball. Mm. And if, you ha if, if we could show it on film or anything else, uh, you would see. I mean, look, first off, look at Baker. Just look at Baker. He's looking back like, wait, and he's going to have a point here, Baker, where yeah, he's ready to block. He, he's ready to block, and you'll see because the, the, the little score bug here blocks it, but – he looks at Odell, and they're like, "Yeah, why didn't he give it to him? And, and to me, it does look like it was a called reverse. Look, look at – here's another guy to look at here. Look at Joel Bentonio. Watch as I let this play, okay? Watch his reaction. He's going – well, look at it. You go, what, oh, you're yeah. supposed to give it to that yeah. guy. Well, why, are, why do you have the ball? Yeah. Uh, so that was a mess up. They went back to the reverse later on, but that's it's over once the team's seen it. They ran it with Schwartz later on, and he got like four or five yards. But that, to me, was one of the themes of the game. Then they got him in a passing game with Cleveland. Cleveland, they're not. that's not the strength of their team to get in the shotgun and, and right. spread you out and be surgical that way. No, they're a little bit, we want to run the ball, we're going to create play action passes off it, bootlegs off of it. And then, yeah, we got a handful of drop back passes and shotgun plays that we're pretty good at. But when you make them do that play after play, and especially against that defense, when Vance Joseph knows, oh, now I got him passing the ball and he can do all his crazy zone coverages and zone blitzes, they're pretty hard to stop, Arizona. Let's pivot to the other side now, the Kyler Murray-led Cardinal offense right. against the Browns defense. For all of us who thought the Cleveland defense was going to be pretty good this year, what's going on? Well, you know, this is where stats lie. Like, stat, Cleveland's defense was top three in football. That's great. When you have the schedule they had, I, there would be right. a lot of teams that have been in the top three in football. I mean, they got to play Bears and Justin Fields, right, with that offense when they ran the Andy Dalton offense with Justin Fields. They got to play <laughs> the Houston Texans, and Tyrod Taylor got hurt. That was huge. And then, uh, you know, they had they – they stopped the Minnesota Vikings, but I don't even give that full credit either just because, all right, there's great common knowledge between those two teams. Mm. You know, Stefanski was in Minnesota. I'm sure he coached, you know, uh, defensive coordinator um, w Woods uh, into, into some of the things that Minnesota likes to do on that side of the ball. Um, but, but, yes, the Browns' defense – and, listen, it's disappointing uh, to me – the Browns are disappointing altogether. They're 3-3, three and three and they have definitely one of the five best rosters in football. Mm. And I know they were injured and all that, but that's why this Thursday night against Denver is going to be big. Yeah. They mess up a few things every game. And when I say they just mess up, it doesn't mean like they mess up and let up a five-yard gain. They mess up and let touchdowns and 40-yard gains and game-changing plays, and that's not acceptable. I've got a mess up here for you that we're going we're gonna to take a look at. How yeah. about when the other team has third and 19, scoreless game halfway through the first, and somehow – they get 21. Right. And, and, like, again, you should be ultra conservative here if you're anybody on the Cleveland Browns defense. I mean, it's, like you said, it's third and 18 on the 21-yard line. You should win 90% of the time I, I mean, I would say at least. Yeah, yeah definitely. A, at least. I mean, you really should just be going, don't let them score a touchdown. It doesn't matter. That's all that matters. All right? And they're playing a little bit of a different coverage here. All right? So what they're doing here oops, is – Playing like half field here, cover two over here, okay? And they're playing really kind of a quarters combination with these two, and they're letting Denzel Ward lock up with DeAndre Hopkins. So he's basically in man-to-man, -man and it's, hey, you other ten guys, you run the defense. That's what they're doing. I could be wrong, and if I am wrong, somebody in Cleveland call me and tell me I'm wrong, but I'm pretty hmm. sure I'm right on this one, hmm. all right? And so I understand it all the way. 
Now, as this play develops, okay, with Kyler Murray and everything here, it, it, it's, it's, it's basically for these two, right, as they drop back, you got the first guy that goes inside, you got the first guy that goes outside. And what they're going to do here is Ronald Moore is going to run the post route, and Christian Kirk is going to run the corner route right underneath it. And our man Troy Hill, who I like and is a good player, he for some reason takes the bait on Ronald Moore's post route. And all they need to do is just go straight back. You have no business in there. There's nothing for you to worry about. There's a safety. John Johnson is there. There's no reason. Okay, so now here we go. I'm going to let it play. And watch. It doesn't take much, but here you go. Look how he just takes a few steps inside following him. Okay, and I hope everybody can follow. All right, it's this guy we're talking about right here. If you're just listening on, you know, strictly audio, um, this is where Troy Hill just takes the bait. And you can't do that. Not in this situation. And to me, it's just these type of mistakes on a weekly basis where I, I don't know what, what to say. But that's him all the way. Hell of a throw. Hell of a throw. Moving perfect to his throw. Left, yeah. But it just should never come down to that. It should never come down to that. And, again, you know, I, I, I would be shocked that this is his responsibility as far as Denzel Ward. I don't think it is. And the way Troy Hill reacts and looks back at the safety, nobody looks at Denzel Ward, okay? And I'm almost 100% sure I'm right about that, okay? Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to be a jerk or anything like that. But, yes, ultimately – it's that type of mistake, and you see it a handful of these every week. I don't know what he's worried about. Just stay along this line right here. Stay on the outside leverage, and you'll be absolutely fine. He lets it up. You could see he's disgusted with himself after the guy catches the ball, and that's that. We, Not we, a bad idea what they're doing coverage-wise. Yeah. Not. It's just details kind of get messed up every week. We watched last week the Chargers game. They were messing up the quarter that's coverages right, the and some of that. Oh, yeah. uh, messing up coverages almost on every drive. And that's just, they're too talented to be doing that right there. And as far as the other guys we're watching on the field there, Kyler Murray in the offense, when, when I watch him yeah. on Sundays now, then I kind of sort through and kind of see what they've done and what their themes are. I, I, I think we can say if he's not – the most improved quarterback in the NFL. He's one of the most improved. Definitely. Yet he's he's throwing less than he did last year. Yeah. He's running less than he did last year. Right. So we talked about all this help that he needed to have this year to take the next step. I think part of the – or one of the ingredients there is um, he's doing a little bit less. Yeah. But doing what he's doing really, really well. He's doing a little bit less. He's more efficient doing it. Really efficient, But them yeah. as an offense are doing more. You know, I think that's the big thing. Like, yeah, you, you, you told me before we started the show, like, you watch back the game. Yeah, they run the ball. There's, yeah. more, there's more tight ends involved in the football game. It's not always so reliant on let Kyle, let's make, let Kyler make a play. Right. You know, now we're seeing, like, yeah, they can make plays. We know that with that superstar group and him at quarterback, definitely. And it's not just him running it. I mean, I, no, no, he, it's he has not. run five, six, or seven times in every game. Like, he's not, he doesn't have a game every third game where he runs it 18 times. No, no, I mean, definitely that, not. That's not happening. No, it's a handful of scrambles yeah. and then just a, a, a cherry-picked, oh, here comes a quarterback design run to screw you over. That, that's all it is. And it's the perfect little formula they got going right now. Again, you don't know really what to defend. And to me, where they've gone to the next level, and I think I've said this a little on the pod, is, yeah, the big plays, we know they can do that. He's a superstar. He's way better on third down. You know, we discussed that a lot going in the year. He was not good, good on third down early in his career. Now I think he's number one quarterback in football on third, third down, down, right? And, you know, added on top of that, they've shown an element of because they're not so reliant on the big play that they can go on 14-play drives and 12-play yeah. drives yes. and move it five and six yards at a time and be patient that way and have enough scheme stuff to kind of nickel and dime their way down the field if, okay, you want to take away our big plays, that's fine. And that's, to me, where they've gone to another level. You have all the ways he's developed and all the talent he is showing, really, in all facets of his game. Yeah. You also have the fact that their defense, going back to where we started here with, with this game, one of a handful of teams in the NFL giving up less than 20 points per game. I mean, that's really doing something in today's game. And they're top five in the NFL in rushing attempts. And doing that without Kyler, as we talked about, 
adding big numbers to it. That's amazing. That that really is. And I didn't know the rushing attempt thing there. But Isn't that something about it, them? It is something. Ne- I never would have guessed that. Offensive line can do a little bit of everything, and they are staying patient with they're it. I mean, you watch them. They're clearly Yeah, you watch Chase Edmonds and Connor. They're, they're not going to let you off the hook for – you're going to play pass defense all game? Okay, we're not going to let you off the hook. And I think that's been a, a big improvement by their football team for we sure. We sat right here last week, Chris, and a lot of people, I mean, they, they deserved it, railed against the Chiefs defense. Yeah. For, I mean, last in the league right. at that point, played really poorly the last time we saw them. Yep. So they show up, big part of the 31-13 win over the Washington football team. I think we need to give them some props Definitely. for what they did. 100% we do. You know, listen, I'm, I'm still skeptical to a degree. Yeah, it's just sure. one game. Yeah, it's one game, but – like I kind of like the thought of what they did this game. And, and basically what we're about to show you is, you know, instead of what we saw the first few weeks of, you know, an occasional blitz, but a lot of disguise coverages and, you know, we're showing this coverage and now we're dropping out over here and everything that way, you know, teams have kind of shredded them and, and torn them apart. What they got to in this game was a little bit of like, you know what? Screw it. We're messing up some of these calls and these crazy disguise coverages we're not playing it with great detail. So they got a little bit more into like, we're going to play some man coverage a little bit, and we're going to just force the issue at the line of scrimmage. You know, a little bit like we just talked about with Arizona and Cleveland in the run game. I think they basically just said, wait, quarterbacks are sitting back there all day. I don't care what coverages you play. They're going to pick you apart if they right. can sit there all day. And we're getting gashed in the run game because we're trying to show, like, you know, play certain coverages and disguises. So they kind of overwhelm the line of scrimmage. And within that, yeah, they pressured Tyler, Taylor Heineke a lot. And here's the other thing that, you know, even I lose sight of sometimes. When you do blitz and do stuff like that, you know, if your studying's right, you get a good feel of what teams do against the blitz. Mm. Oh, if we blitz four off this side, he likes to throw it hot to this receiver. And you could teach your defenders that. So now where, all right, we're blitzing. Right, let me get ready to come downhill because he's probably going to throw it hot to this guy. And that's what I saw from this game more than anything. And I thought it was a good approach. Certainly it forced the issue and it helped out the football team. Best Lo- defensive game of the year for them. Right? Yeah. So many eyeballs on the Chiefs yeah. and really focusing on right. the Mahomes picks and also the defense here. So I want to see a number of times here of what you're talking about. First one, late first quarter, third yeah. down and nine for the football team. Yeah, third down and nine for the football team. And, you know, you could see at the line of scrimmage again, you know, you're not sure, you know, but it's like you can obviously see there's some man-to-man principles here. And what they went to in this game is they just said, Legereus, Sneed, and Fenton, you're starting if we're in base defense. If we get nickel, Mike Hughes, you come. You come in the game. You play outside. Fenton plays outside, and we'll put Legereus, Sneed at nickel. They took Sorensen out. They put Thornhill in. Thornhill has three rockets up his ass. He can fly. He changes the way their defense looks when he's on the field at the safety position, at least in my opinion. And, you know, here we go. So, you know, typically with, like, with Kansas City, you see these type of looks, and then it's like, boom, he drops out, he drops out. He looks like he's going to blitz, and he goes down the middle of the field, and they're playing some sort of Tampa 2 or some version of that, okay? No, but they, they changed that up this week. And, again, this is where we get into – here it is. Okay. Boom. It's third and nine. We're going to make you make a decision and make a throw, and we're bringing six people, right? And, and really, bringing six people, it's, it's all out pressure. It's all out blitz. Like, if this guy goes out and this guy goes out, these guys got them, okay? They're man-to-man. But they must have had a good feel for protections, mm. what you're going to do off of that, and – they knew if we blitz, these backs will stay in and block, okay? And now that gave, like, a little freedom. Of course, these guys are on an island. There's no, there's no hiding that. But within that, watch these two safeties back here, everybody. You know, once they see their guys block, they start looking for crossing routes and things like that to help out on these other two guys. Yeah, Fenton's going to be on an island. There's nothing you can do. But either way, they're not going to let the quarterback sit back there all day and make a decision – and now he's going back and he's going, wait, I got a three-man route and there's nothing in the middle of the field. And they force him to pick one of the one-on-one matchups on the outside. Yep. And Fenton's all over it. He does a great job. Bringing six, I mean, I don't see why, I don't know why we don't see it more. Because yeah. we've talked so much about bringing five. Right. Oftentimes isn't a great number. Right. Unless you do a wonderful trick of, of disguising and tricking. Sure. Seven's pretty aggressive and pretty risky. Right. You're vulnerable. Sure. Six puts you in that spot where you bring six. 
at least one safety, if not two like we saw there, can kind of stay back and play their own version of center field. No doubt. It just feels like that the right That's number. That's the right number yeah. if you're going to do it. Yeah. I, I, I hear you there. I do. You know, I, I think why you don't see it is because a lot of the good teams in football, even when you bring six, have figured out we can block it up and then we can still gash your ass some of the pass down the field. Yeah. But – they obviously had a good feel for how they were going to be attacked off these sets. And let's go to the next play. There we go. Wait, yeah, where is it? What, what so this is an early second, Chris. Early second. second and seven. Early second, second and seven, seven, three. And, you know, again, the blitz numbers, I don't think were necessarily up for the team. But what I would tell you is I go, yes, they were. They were up for sure. In the competitive part of the game, they blitzed more than any part of the season so far. You got to remember, once they go up 24 to 10 or 24 to 13, whatever it was, they stopped blitzing. They played a little more conservatively. So we didn't get a full four quarter picture of the defense they had to play here in this game. I think that's worth talking about a little bit mm. because, like, I brought it up to Pete, and Pete was like, well, you know, the numbers show they blitz. And I was like, yeah, but it was fourth quarter, the game was over, and they played a different style of defense to where yeah. if the game continues to be competitive, I think we would have saw a greater number of blitzes. But same type of thing here. I mean, it's, again, you see what we got here, okay? Washington's got a tight end to the left, receiver to the left, and then two receivers to the right. They're not really disguising much or trying to be crazy here. It's, again, they're going up, up yours. It's man-to-man -man coverage. The hell with it. And now you're going to have to try to make a throw into tight coverage, and we'll see if you can block all these guys that we got coming here on the blitz. And that's, again, I got to think – there was a little feel, okay, for how the protections would be called, right? You're going to see this guy goes this way, this guy goes this way. They're probably worried about some sort of slot blitz. And Kansas City actually just has two guys off the edge there. And it's these four, and now it's this guy who comes with a wraparound, right? So now they're wrong. They're wrong in the way they're pushing the protection. You know, the safeties kind of dangle out here to where – you go, I don't know if this is all-out blitz. You can't definitely say it's going to be all-out blitz. But when it comes down to it, it really is. You mm. know, and again, here, I just want everybody to watch. This safety, Juan Thornhill here, right here, he's man-to-man -man on the tight end who came across, even though he's seven, eight, long nine, nine yards, long way to yeah. go. But it goes back again to I guarantee they had a feel for where the ball might go in some of these situations, and they were comfortable with it. Tyron Matthew – is man-to-man -man on McKissick, the back. That's who he's covering. Look, I mean, be, you know, before the, before the snap, he moves to McKissick's side right as the ball is being snapped, and then once he sees him go the other way, look, he sees him block. I mean, look, I just want everybody to see this. Watch Tyron Matthew here. He sees this block, and now as soon as he sees it, he reads it, and he helps out on the other receiver mm -hmm. up top in the one-on-one -on -one matchup, yep. right? So, to me, it was really well-thought-out, calculated blitzes. And, okay, we blitzed. We forced the issue. We got pressure on the quarterback. It was second on seven. Okay, whoop de doo They got three or four yards, and now we got them in third and three. But uh, I, that, that, to me, is what we continue to see early on in the game a lot. And I think we might even have the have next one more? play here. Is it the next play? The very next yeah. play, because it's second quarter, 13:57. I talked about with Pete with all these yeah. uh, yesterday, so I forget all the damn plays we got here. Yep, okay. next one. You see, it's, again, a lot of people at the line of scrimmage for anybody listening on an audio. You got a bunch left to the top here, three guys, back offset weak. Here we go. To the right, it's a one-on-one -on -one matchup. Terry McLaurin on Fenton. Okay, so what's going to happen? You know, you see a little, little like, little orbit motion where the receiver goes there and back. To, they're trying to gauge the coverage. All right? This one's not all out blitz. It's not. It's just a five-man pressure. Okay? Five-man pressure, but it's tight man-to-man -man coverage once again. All right? At the top here, again, this is where it goes back to, like, the, the, they must have had a good feel for the attack. They're basically man-to-man -man on the point of the three-man bunch. Thornhill has the first guy inside, and this is, I believe, Legereus, or no, this is Mike Hughes. He's going to take the first one that goes outside. Tyron Smith's going to go back. But the also thing off of it is we've seen this a look a lot already, and they've brought six guys, right? Mm -hmm. So we, we've already shown, shown that three times, but now it's, oh, it's just a five-man, and we got an extra guy in coverage. And, again – 
they kind of overwhelm the pocket as far as the pass protection to where he's got people in his face and now he's got to make a throw with people in his face. And yeah, he, he's got a guy open, but again, he can't really step into the throw. Somebody hits his arm as he throws it. And you know, that's good defense from real good, really good defense by Spagnola, really good adjustment for them. I was wondering what they were going to do or how they're going to go. And that's why Andy Reid and Spags are, are pretty good. Big step in the right direction. Yeah. Prior to that game, Chris, with the Kansas City defense, yeah. when they gave up 29 to Cleveland all the way back in week one, right. that counted as their best outing <laughs> until yesterday. Everybody else was hitting in the 30s yeah. and above. Right. How, how much of, uh, you know, how confident they were there and just kind of lining up and doing what they wanted had to do with the fact that they would played Lamar, they played Herbert, they just played Josh Allen. Now you have Taylor Heineke. So you walk into it like, okay, we're going to kind of do yeah, what we want and yeah. show what we want and play like we well, want. Well, there's definitely less of an element of, oh, we have to worry about quarterback design runs or this guy scrambling and doing that for sure. I, I don't know how much that played into it. That's a really good question. We think it, it would have to. I think we'll get the answer next week. Next week they play Tennessee. So we'll see. It's, if they have a similar approach, I go, no, this is they just decide they're going to play this way and they don't like the way they've been playing. Yeah. You know, if they go back to a little bit what we saw in the first few weeks, you know, then I, I, I don't know. I don't know. Tannehill's not the kind of guy that's going to scramble and run a lot. He can do he can, that. Yeah. But I'm just interested to see over these next few weeks kind of that's what the a, yeah. approach is. Is this going to be the new thing or is this right. specifically for the football team? I don't know that yet. So we'll be watching and we'll talk about it next Wednesday. Be a good litmus test. Yeah, for sure. it will be for right. sure. Let's say in the AFC West. Well, you know what? I want to hit on one more thing before yeah, we go yeah, by yeah. there. Patrick Mahomes is f***ing awesome in that game. Yeah. Awesome. Like. Again, I know he had the stupid turnover where he dropped the snap and then threw the ball like like he was in third grade again playing in the backyard. Guys are allowed to have a bad player three. Right. Well, they, they got a ton of pressure on them. Yeah. I mean, they, they got to do it all, I mean, to a degree. And I think they've kind of, with that pressure, tried to do too much at times. But, man, I mean, out of this world good in that game. Mm. Again. What would you like best? It just – I thought his decisions were amazing. When he did get pressured, he looked good moving around and making some plays that way. And he just – every throw he made was almost on the money. I mean, ever, almost every one. And, yeah, we'll see. I think Kansas City's offense is getting close to getting hot here again and, yeah. and starting to go like, yeah, we're going to stop messing up and we're going to start messing you up. There's going to be a point coming up soon here. We get to November, Chris, where we're going to kind of forget – what people's records or what their stumbles were. And we're going to put, yeah. put a lot more on, okay, right. it's mid-November looking ahead. Who are we most scared of? Right. It's amazing in the AFC right now, over half the teams are either 3-3 three and three or 4-2. and two. Yeah. Think about that. I know. So they're all either good or maybe really good. Yeah, right. And Kansas City's in that mix. Definitely. If they get a little better defensively, yep. you got to think they'll have more games from Mahomes like you're just talking about. No doubt. Than not. No doubt. i, I got to think Tyree Kill has stopped dropping balls and letting people intercept it. You know, McCall Hardman, he fumbles on a 20-yard reverse play. I mean, they, they've, make, they're, they've made so many mistakes. There's a difference between an offense where I go, well, you're getting their ass whooped, and then – Oh, this team's moving the ball down the field and they just do something stupid. Like there's a difference there as far as, you know, the quality there. And that they're more of part two of that. They just mess things up. We'll see if they can uh, get back on track. But they're still one of the greatest units in football, that offense for in sure. Kansas City. All right, a couple of teams that they uh, are chasing or right there with in the AFC West, the Raiders and the Broncos. I, I, I want to go more with the quarterbacks here because we have two QBs here really on opposite sides of yeah, it right. on Sunday. I think the positive should lead the way. Derek Carr. Really good once again. He's back on track, 18 out of 27 for 341. Yeah, really good. I mean, had a phenomenal day. You know, you could tell they had a good plan for how Denver was going to attack them. And I think the biggest thing is, you know, he just – I always talk about this. Oh, you know, he threw for 335 yards. Great game. Uh, I want to yeah. go, well, it depends sometimes. Yeah. You know, if there was 450 there to be had, then that's not that great. You know, I, I go back to like Jalen Hurts in Kansas City a few weeks ago. People are going to look at his stats and go, great. I'm going to go, yeah, but two out of the three field goal drives they had, it was wide open touchdowns. He didn't hit him. He should have had another 100 yards in the game. There is something to that. Derek Carr takes advantage of all that's there to be had. He definitely did in this football game. And uh, compared to the other quarterback, Teddy Bridgewater, who didn't. Mm, and and that's, we'll get there. that's kind of where we're at right now. But let's go to this, some, some of this Raiders film and, and see what they did to, to the Broncos defense. Do I see we're starting out with some all 22 here? I think we are. I think we got some all 22 right here. All right, so. So th this is eventually going to go to Ruggs. It's going to go to Ruggs on a post route. Ruggs on a post route, all right. 
You know, Denver, listen, I don't know exactly sure if this is half field cover two coverage or if it's man to man straight across the board and this safety is just over here trying to make it look like it. All right. Either way, we got it's going to be man on man on man on the front side. Okay. That's what you're going to get. And again, Derek Carr, I think the thing that I love about it is just the recognition. I think when he sees this safety back over here, okay, and, you know, again, I'm not sure if this is a true cover two type of corner he's, or he's not. He's lined up on the numbers. I know. on the. I think he's really trying to just scare them from throwing the single cut. Yeah. And I think Vic Fangio thinks he has a good feel for what the Raiders do in these little bunch sets. So he's like what they would call like almost, you know, he's got a guy here waiting inside. He's got him. He's got him. They got four, four on three, basically, because they're probably worried about some sort of Hunter Renfro option play, which they do a lot. But within that, that leaves Ronald Darby, okay, one-on-one -on -one with Ruggs, with really no safety help because the safety, like you said, is on the inside He's, edge of the other numbers there. Yeah. Right. And who, who's he worried about over there? I, I, I believe that's Brian Edwards. Jeez. Okay. Which, yeah, which I want to go, you know, again, you got Patrick Sertain the second there. Why don't you just let him live on his own? And you got two guys guarding Edwards. Exactly right. Now, again, I don't know what Patrick Sertain's doing there. You know, really, really, like, this is where I'm not sure it's truly a cover two look. I think they're trying to make him feel like that. Because if this was like a cover two look, I think he'd be trailing him a little bit more. Mm. But he's staying on top of him like it's man to man. And that gets, you know, Justin Simmons, who's a safety and a hell of a player. But I just think he stays over here too long at the top of the screen. He just stays over there too long. And as you see now, again, on the bottom of the screen, like Ronald Darby's in a tough spot. You know, he's in a tough spot. And I bet you the numbers show – that they run a lot of this type of stuff and options that they don't necessarily attack down the field in these formations. I'm betting Vic Fangio played those numbers. And, of course, he was wrong. And the Raiders had, must have had a good idea that that was going to be the case. And Derek Carr just stands in there nice and calmly, pretty good pocket. Boom, gets it in there just before Simmons gets over to make the play. Touchdown. And it's a touchdown. But that's taking advantage of all that's there to be had on an offense. It was third down and two. Third and two. So that goes back to my point. I'm, I'm you got to remember my points. They're worried about Hunter Renfro. They call it third and Renfro in mm. Las Vegas. They're trying to stop that. So they said, okay, you want to try to stop that and overplay the hand that way? We got this for you. All right, let's go second and 10 now with yeah. our next uh, Raiders offense here. Yeah, you know, again, just another great play by Derek Carr. Not, not that I want to, like, show anything great schematically here, okay, but it's it's man-to-man -man coverage. It's, it's a five-man rush. Denver's got one, two, three, four, five. They're trying to create five one-on-ones. The Raiders do a pretty good job in protection. You can see you got man here, you got man here, man here, man here. This Justin Simmons is coming down for the back, okay? And then there's a free safety back here. You know, but Derek Carr just does a great job of like not panicking in the not panicking in the pocket and reading the play out the right way. And knowing that like, man, I got Darren Waller matched up to the matched up with a uh, I think this is Callahan, or uh, I'm pretty sure it is. I can't remember exactly who it is. He's on the outside edge, and he trusts him that he's going to kind of work him out and get back inside him and run the deep cross route. And with the safety being so deep, he just makes the perfect throw to Darren Waller, and it's easy pickings. Man, it's, it's, it's as wide open as he's going to be that far it, down the field. Exactly right. Take it back to the snap again, yeah. Chris. I want to tie together some of the things you talked about. Yeah. First of all, they only rush five. Only rush five. Which is tough to pull off. And go right back to the snap. How much confusion is there in the box as to who's coming? No, exactly There's none. right. There's none. None. Exactly right. And, you know, yeah, just to rush five, it's like kissing your sister. I'm just – I'm not a fan of it. I'm right. not. You know, I mean, I, I'd rather have that guy – or do something crazy and rush four, create some sort of advantage. But right now, <laughs> like, you can't, you can't do that. I just know that. I mean, and, and you're right. It's just there's nothing. There's nothing to be gained there. The Raiders protected better during the game in general, and I'm being heckled by fans. <laughs> um, 
<laughs> Call it, calling please, the boss please. a fan. I'll I don't you, know. I'll give you autographs later, you, <laughs> you stalker. Get out of here. He's, he's, he's upset about the Patriots result still a few uh, days later. Yeah, well, yeah, it's all right. It's all right. I don't feel sorry for any Boston sports fans at all. We saw the Raiders succeed against third and short. Yeah. Second to last play. Let's go third and long now. Yeah. Third, third down and 12. Third quarter. Third and, and then and again, like, you know, first off, you see here, right, not a lot of disguise, not a ton of it. Not that there's anything wrong with that. But Derek Carr, he knows, like, right now, he's like, wait, all these guys are at the same level. This is going to be an all-out pressure look. He knows that. There, there, there's no doubt about it. And within that, you know, we talked about before is, like, post routes being – a route you go to, an all-out pressure, right? And what does he have here? At the top of the screen, he's got Henry Ruggs on, I believe that's Darby again, with outside leverage. It's a lot of soft man coverage, too. I mean, these guys are 10 yards off the receivers. Agreed. It just, it, that's it, what you want playing quarterback. No, no doubt. What you want, he's, he knows he's got his backs all right. He knows he's one short as far as the blitz is concerned. Like, he knows, okay, yeah, I got six guys protecting – they're bringing seven, and that's why you're going to see him kind of fade away just to protect himself so nobody gets there just as he's throwing the ball. But off the back foot, and we've seen this a number of times already this year, mm. he throws it across the field a little bit so the receiver can use his body to shield off the defender. He puts the ball over here instead of over here, which is a mistake that's made a lot. And – Henry Ruggs, for a small guy, does a great job using his body and being physical and catching the football. Yeah, how but great is that for Raiders fans to see that he's stepping up this he's year? He's stepping up big time. Yeah. And, and that's hey, the Raiders got off, you know, got answers for everything. you got to be careful about blitzing the Raiders too much and showing these type of looks. They're, they're, they have shown that they know what to do. And then, of course, Derek Carr is not being Johnny Conservative this year. He's going right. after it. Yeah, no doubt. So Derek Carr with a home run of a day there on Sunday. Other side, you had Teddy Bridgewater. Uh, playing small ball, and it just, um, I mean, it was a long day from start to finish. There, there's just not enough, like, and let's go to the plays. There's just not enough, like, good plays from Teddy Bridgewater in the pass offense during the competitive parts of football games right now. I'm sorry. That's just the way it is. A lot of it's end-of-the-game stats or, yeah, we're down 27 to 10, and, okay, yeah, you made some great tr drives against the Steelers who were a little bit of a different defensive mindset at that point. You almost came back. I get it. But, you know, even the Ravens game before that, there's just not enough. He's not taking advantage of all that's, being, uh, that's all there to be had. And here's your first example. I mean, it's four-man rush. It's cover three zone. I mean, we just saw Derek Carr hit this same throw, basically, to Darren Waller, except this time you're going to have Cortland Sutton, who is a freak of nature. I mean, is a, he's a star. And this is just coming back from a torn ACL last year. But, like, Hey, listen, I, I don't know what else to say. It doesn't, it doesn't get any more wide open missed than him. the NFL. Yeah. You missed him. It's missed an open missed guy. Missed him. I mean, missed him to the point where he can barely get a hand on the football. Okay? So, you know, that, that's what's troubling to me with the Teddy Bridgewater stuff because you know, he was playing because he was going to take care of the football and it looked like he was going to be more aggressive down the field. And he was early on against bad defenses. But now it's better defenses and – He's not as good at throwing the ball into tight windows or hitting some of the plays that are going to be a difference in the game. And he's turned the ball over in this game, too, so it's a double whammy, and I think that's concerning. Yeah, through three interceptions, Carr didn't throw any. We'll take a look at the numbers right now. First three games, I mean, that really forced you to look at it and say, hey, maybe maybe Teddy Bridgewater's yeah, going to be really good. I thought he changed his way, yeah. yeah. I thought, hey, he's being aggressive. He's hitting downfield shots, but Last we're getting three games. back a little bit into – like the Teddy that we've always seen. It's just a little too conservative. He misses too many of the big throws that change the, change the game. Four picks. And then, yeah, you got four picks to go along with yeah. it. Four picks to go along with it. Had the fumble in the game, too. Uh, and so, don't, yeah, don't overlook the yards per attempt being down to, because that was one of the knocks on him yeah, last year, too. It was just no doubt. kind of a conservative approach. 100%. So we're back to the game now. This is third down and five, early second quarter. Third down and five. And look at all we got to do is the bottom of the screen. It's Cortland Sutton. Again, man to man. I mean, it, it's, it's, it's standard. It's, it's man to man across the board. There's nothing to look at. Sutton gets a little banged here at the bottom of the screen as far as his release, but he's big. He gets off it. And a little bit of, again, a wobbler football out there. 
Mm. And Sutton does all he can. He dives, he lays out, and he gets some fingertips on it. But, you know, again, that's just the bigger, like, if people want to know why Denver's not been as great lately, it's they've left yards and plays He's, on the football field. He for was sure. three yards behind the defense there. I mean, that's that, that might not happen for him three more times. That's a throw all where, you know, you don't throw the ball high up in the air or do that. You know, at, 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 at release here, Sutton's already got the guy beat by two or three yards. Just – Throw a line drive and hit him. Just make sure he catches it. It's right. like forget about leading at this point. Just make sure you get the completion and get the 30- or 40-yard game. And we've got one more Teddy here halfway through the third quarter on a first yeah. and 10. And the, the first two were, were missed, missed opportunities on open guys. Yeah. Might be uh, more of the same. No, here it is. It's, it is going to be the same thing. It is. And listen, I could have showed you probably another three or four plays after this, all right? I mean, again, here we go. Drop back. You see it's a four-man rush. It couldn't be an easier read. It's three. It's it's uh, cover three. It's Seattle scheme. I mean, it's basically like a little form of a double post, and the safety's going to go with the underneath post, and Teddy Bridgewater, pocket's good. It's just severely underthrown, and, of course, it gets knocked down for an incompletion. Right. And, yeah, it's just – Either throw it out there or make that decision quicker. Uh, but, I, I mean, I think it's something to watch for with Denver on Thursday night and to watch with them going forward here because I think we are getting into the time where if he continues to play like this or another game or two, then you're going to start out here in the we want Drew lock stuff in Denver. <laughs> it said he threw it 49 times to get 334 yards. Carr was 18 out of 27, like I mentioned, Chris. 22 less passes to get seven more yards. Yeah, I mean, right? Think about that. That's a, hey. In the passing game, that's, that's mind-boggling. It's mind-boggling. And, and, again, I remind people, the thing that wins football games is turnovers and explosive plays. Yeah. That, that's, that is. I mean, that's been broken down. I mean, that hasn't changed since I got done playing in football. We'd have a team meeting every now and then where they would remind everybody, like, yeah, yeah we, th this is the two biggest factors that help you win a game. The league's too hard to be thinking you're going to go six or seven yards at a time. And then if you're going to go six and seven yards at a time and then turn the ball over occasionally, right. then damn, you're double whammy crapped on there. And yeah. then that's where, you know, there's just there's been very few teams. Hey, Peyton Manning and the Colts, if you wanted to play past Stevens, he, yeah, he's going to tear your ass up and go on 12 play drives and take six or seven yards at a time. Brady and the Patriots, Breeze and the Saints, you know, but those are special offenses with special quarterbacks. Not everybody can do that. And that's where you got to strike on those type of plays right there. And yeah, one quarterback throws three picks and the other has 19 yards per completion. Yes. Tells a pretty good story Pretty there. good story is right. The game, late Sunday afternoon, Boom. Cowboys. Boom. Patriots, so many big plays from yeah. that game kind of stamped on our minds here. Uh, looks like you want to start out with the, the Cowboys defense as they won in overtime 35-29. Cowboys defense, hey, the one thing you say about them is they got, a, they got you know, got some size, got some guys that look the part. I'm not necessarily like biggest defensive tackles in the world, but damn, some good looking defense ends. Their linebackers, of course, look good with Vander Esch and Micah Parsons. Of course, Trevon Diggs is a stud. And they play so fing hard on the defensive side of the ball. That's really the shows one up, it does it? show. Yeah. There's no yeah. doubt. And that's where I gotta give Dan Quinn a lot of credit. You know, one, his defense has become extremely multiple. He's gotten away from Seattle's scheme. And they hustle like hell, and they bring it. I mean, they hit you, and they don't care if their own head gets knocked off. They're coming back the next play to try to hit you again. And I respect that attitude about them. This game, the first two drives of the game, Paul, maybe the first two and a half, they played a lot of man-to-man. -man. They learned their lesson. They went, uh-oh, wait, New England, nobody no teaches how to run routes better than New England. Mm -hmm attack your leverage of course they had a few tricks too to go along with it that helped their guys get open on man-to-man -man, and that made them have to change their style a little bit and after they did that the the Patriots had a hard time moving the ball on them again until they hit the 75 yard touchdown pass uh, double move play on Trevon Diggs and it looks like we're going to start with that one here yeah, let's start there with we that. Go. Yep. 75 yard TD. Yep. And and again, like I said, the Cowboys had had issues playing man to man. All right, so that, that had really been a little problem for them. And they had gotten away from it for the most part. All right, but, you know, it's the first play of the drive. Maybe they're not sure if they might get a run. So they go back to it. And you could see here, there's Troy Aikman. He's circling the matchup down there. That's not <laughs> me. 
Uh, but this is simple. I mean, it's, it's, it's a simple concept. It's just it's double move here. It's a little out and up here. And it's man-to-man -man everywhere on the board, as you can see, right? And there you go. And you got a guy here just free in the middle to guy like, read things. So they're playing like our old one robber, right? Cover yeah. one robber. This guy's the robber. He's looking just to rob anything over the middle to help out guys. All right. And you could see here at the bottom, Bourne, Bourne makes a nice move where Troy Aikman's circling him. Diggs is not in a bad spot. I mean, Diggs really, he bites on the fake, but recovers really well to where if Mac Jones underthrows this, He's going to get his second pick in a row in two plays. Now, with this move and how long it took, and let me just add to this, Kendrick Bourne in a tight split, it's not a great ask for your safety who ultimately is going to get over here to get right here to make this. That's not a great ask, not at all. And that to me, again, Trevon Diggs, yeah, you know, I know he took one for the team and says, oh, I got beat, and he didn't want to blame anybody else. Well, that, that's that's a horrible play by the safety. He, I mean, he, he. I know, as you pointed out, he wasn't set up for success here. But when the ball's in the air and he takes off for it, he should make that play nine times out of ten, right? Well, who are you talking about? The the safety. The deep safety. hundred yeah, percent. Right. I, I mean, there two things should happen here. Ninety-nine out of a hundred times, either Kendrick Bourne loses his head from decapitation, yeah. or the ball gets an ball, easy interception. Yeah. I mean, one of the two. I mean, Diggs, he slows down right here. Once he realizes the trajectory of the ball, and he slows down because he's like, wait, my safety's about to kill this guy. I better. Yeah. He like kind of, I, I think is like almost like, like, well, let me look. As he turns back, he kind of stops and slows down because he's like, wait, this guy's going to pick it off or crush this guy. Let me make sure I'm not in like danger's way. Which safety is that? And that's DeMonte Kazee. Okay. Right? Did he, did, did he look? Is he watching the ball? I, I don't know what he's watching. Because if, if he's watching the ball, he has his pick of trying to pick it off, trying to knock it down, or trying to lay out the receiver. It's like it's like he looked at the ball but didn't really know where the receiver was exactly. Like he thought the ball was just going to get through and come right to him. I, don't, I really don't know. But as you can see with, with Trevon Diggs right here, I mean, he's going to throw up his hands here in a second to be like, come on, I'm in a good spot. I got him underneath. Yeah. Where are you? And that was, of course, a, a huge moment in the football game and gave the, the Patriots another chance. Man, just uh, big-time misplay Man-to-man, there. Man, though. That was one thing that they learned they couldn't do against the Patriots. The Patriots are just too good at attacking leverages of man-to-man, -man, getting their guys in splits like that to make it hard on you to play man-to-man. -man. And, of course, the crosses and the picks and everything like that, that's where they're tough to do that. And Dallas hadn't done it much ever since those first two drives. And that's when they really changed. Even on the third drive – where the Patriots threw a touchdown pass and had it called back, I believe, for holding. The very next play was the Randy Gregory strip sack fumble. That play before the touchdown that was called back was a man-to-man -man play. And after that, they were like, okay, we've seen enough. Right. You know, we're better. We've got more talent than these guys. We're killing ourselves getting beat in some of these one-on-one -on -one matchups and the plays they're throwing at us. I want to look at one more game here in the AFC. and Let's remember back, Krista, when Indy was 0-3. Things looked pretty bad. They've won two of the last three, kind of hanging around, and Carson Wentz in that time looking pretty good. Definitely gotten better the last three weeks. I mean, of course, you know, could have, should have beat Baltimore. I'm not going to lie. I think they outplayed them. They yeah. lost. You know, they didn't kind of take advantage of their opportunities to put the game away, but definitely better play. I mean, less holding on the ball, better decisions. Of course, you know, been some bigger plays in the past game. The run game has come alive a little bit. And let's not forget, I mean, they are mi missing maybe the best offensive lineman in football in Quentin Nelson. I think he's going to be back. Mm. You know, and, and I would say the offense, they, they're, they're really close. They're a dangerous two and four football team. I, I would say so too. You know, yeah. the defense is good. It's a real top 10 ish type defense. I'm not going to sit here and tell you it's a top three or four or five type defense, but it's real good. And then if their offense can play like it has the last few weeks, they're going to be a handful down the stretch here. There's no doubt. And I think Wentz has got comfortable within the scheme again and the players and the place. Jonathan Taylor's really good. Yep. I, I mean, listen, Frank Reich, I would say if there's anything I watch a little bit, I wish they'd be a hair more patient with the run game. Mm. I think there's more there to be had. But either way, it's hard to argue with the results they've had on that side of the ball lately. Uh, pretty, It looked like a pretty easy win Sunday, 31-3 against the Texans. Wentz didn't have to throw a lot, yeah. just 11 out of 20, but had some big plays mixed yeah, in Yeah, again, here we go, explosive plays, yeah. right? 11 completions. Exactly. What do you have, 200 and 223. 223 and 11 completions. 
So that's insane. That's good. 20 yards per completion is right. insane. So let's show it. And here's one of the things, too. Like, if, if, if Frank Reich knows what coverages you're going to play, good night. He's as creative as it gets once he gets a good feel for how you're attacking him. And, you know, with Lovey Smith, they play too much cover, too, on the Texan side of the ball. That, that's one of, you know, that's his, that's what Lovey does. And to me, it's just a little too much to where teams can every now and then dial up a play and you go, that's hard on cover, too. Yeah. That's hard on it. And this is one of those examples right here. And they don't exactly execute it the right way. So here we go. We're in a little um, – it's, it's a, it's a, a four-wide receiver set here, even though they got tight splits, okay? And you're going to see a little play action fake to the right with Carson Wentz. And, again, here, just so everybody watches. It's cover two. It's cover two. It's cover two, all right? And you're going to have, you know, guys right here underneath looking for anything cross. It's not Tampa two. If it was Tampa two, we'd get a guy down the middle. This is just cover two, all right? And – Play action fake to the right by Carson Wentz. And what we're going to get here is, listen, a lot of teams, when they do this right here, it just goes post and deep cross, and then you got some guys that are down for a check down, right? So you go one, two, and then three to some sort of check down here, right? All right, well, it's cover two, and they know they can stress it a little bit. So what do they do? They have Paris Campbell run a post corner. And now you got this, this guy, I think this is Pittman, coming on a deep cross. And, yeah, there's a little guy in the flat here. But where, where Houston messes this up is Justin Reed probably at this point thinking it's post. And if it's post, he knows this guy will get him, right? He sees the deep crosser coming. And where he makes a mistake is he kind of stops and stutters once he sees the deep cross coming. And really how it should be played is in a set like this, even though cover two is responsible for the flat, once cover two starts to see somebody cross into this area, he's got to know he's got to get like kind of in a midpoint between somebody in the flat and this guy and more or less give up this completion. Fine, you do that because you don't want what we're seeing to happen here is Justin Reed worry about this crossing route and now Paris Campbell gets behind him. All right, I hope I explained that right. Um, I got a lot of damn plays and thoughts going through my head. <laughs> All right. It's a good three level, though. You got the flat, you got yes. the intermediate, you got the guy over the top. Good three level. Yeah. And look, see, so right here, you know, he sees a guy in the flat. That's great, but he's got to keep his eyes over here and be midpointing between this a little bit. And you can see now Justin Reed's kind of put his attention to this guy, but he's in the process of realizing, oh, crap, the guy's come back into my half field area, yeah. and now I'm in trouble. And you can see he gets on his horse, but it's too late by that point. And Carson Wentz makes a really good throw to Paris Campbell, who gets hurt on this play. Uh. Paris Campbell is a superstar waiting to break out, and we just can't get him to stay healthy. And I feel really bad for him. That's going to hurt the Colts team. All right, let's go to uh, early second quarter now. Colts offense off and running second down eight. Second down eight. All right. And guess what coverage we're going to see from the Houston Texans? <laughs> guess what coverage? <laughs> It's cover two once again. You're gonna get a cover two, a cover two look once again. All right, and you're gonna have to take my word for it a little bit. But what they do this time, okay? And here we go. I'm gonna show it to you. Just try to pause it right here. The receiver on the bottom of the screen is gonna run a deep out to keep that cover two safety's attention there, and they have T.Y. Hilton running right down the middle to again, I don't mean to bag on the guy, but he just had a tough day here, to, to take advantage of Justin Reed. I'm guessing they might have saw something about Justin Reed where he can be a little too aggressive mm. with what he does in cover two at times. If you just put a little bit of a, you know, like, hey, here you go, you know, take this, take this, and sometimes he takes the cheese and does it. And what it ends up being, again, is a huge play. And you can see Justin Reed here in the bottom of the screen. He's trying to recover because he's the half field safety and this is his side of the field. He's in trouble, but what he did, and you can barely see it, and I'm sorry we don't have the film version of this, you can see there's a receiver down here. Ran a deep out, and he just stayed on that too long. And he had somebody underneath who you can also see oh, the helmet there yeah. that's there. So he didn't need to do it. And that's where it ends up being 
still a phenomenal throw. Hell of a throw. He actually recovered pretty good. Yeah. But it was a beautiful throw by Carson Wentz, who I think is starting to feel his mojo a little bit in this offense. And we've got one more here yeah. for you on the Colts offense. Yep. Mo Ali Cox. I, I called his basketball games back in the old days. It's amazing, right? Right. It's amazing. And they ran this play last week for a touchdown against the Baltimore Ravens. Same play. Same play. And what coverage do you think uh, Texans are playing? A cover two oh. with the safeties on the numbers on both sides. Really wide. Kind of defeats the purpose. Really, really wide cover two. Okay. And now what they're doing this time is they play true Tampa two because they're like, wait, we've seen enough of the, the post, the post corner, whatever. Let's get a damn guy down the middle so our safeties don't have to bite it all the time and do that. And as you're going to see here, this is not necessarily on the safety as much. And, I, again, I don't know what that linebacker d is doing. If he's supposed to stop right here, and I'm talking about this guy right here, I think that's Jonathan Greenard, or I'm not sure exactly who that is. Um, but either way, I'm not sure exactly. This might be a special cover two call. But what I can tell you is with nobody in the flat and nothing to worry about here, he should be back here. OK, and maybe they're playing a special cover, too, where he's kind of waiting for the in cut. Right. You know, teams might do that. All right. Because just the way this safety reacts tells me that he had no he sh didn't have to worry about this. He was more worried about the post route down the middle and stopping that. You can see he goes there right a little bit. He's he's waiting to have to. to he's cover. got he's yeah. in a tough spot. He knows he's in a tough spot right here because he's going. Wait, I got two guys kind of attacking my area, and this guy's not back far enough. I think he's looking for some sort of in cut or something from this guy. He maybe should just be running down the middle. I'm not sure, but either way, it's a big play for the Colts, and really all you gotta do is watch Lonnie Johnson. Oh, I wish we just played it a little bit more. Lonnie Johnson gets mad at Desmond King here because I think he's basically telling him what I was just trying to tell you is I was responsible for kind of the middle of the field here. That's why he, you can see Lonnie Johnson right here. If people are watching, you know, look at him. He kind of moves to that post route, I think, because he knows he has that responsibility. And Desmond King has nothing to be worried about over here, nothing in his in his cover two flat area and the rules are to that that get as deep as the next guy and he doesn't do that and it's a nice throw once again and an easy completion and I'm just telling you if they just played it for a second more Lonnie Johnson right here kind of goes crazy like well you had nobody to worry about why did you not get back here and help me out I can tell you exactly what happened there Chris Desmond King was wondering how his Hawkeyes lost by three touchdowns to Purdue the day before what a letdown still, what a still letdown. on his mind Dan, you guys are still on that uh, great win against Penn State huh you guys forgot yeah. to stop celebrating on that one Th that, that Penn State win feels like a long time ago yep. I don't even remember it anymore <laughs> back it up to the Colts one time though yeah what, what a 180 though when they were 0 three the next three games one loss and no picks. Yeah. I mean, that's that's quite a turn there. And I think there's there's some reason to believe that you know, no, November might be pretty good for you. No, no doubt. I'm, I mean, I'm not giving up on the Colts. I mean, hey, they didn't protect well early on in the year. They had to play some good teams, too. Let's not forget about that. Yep. You know, definitely, you know, teams that start off the year, Rams, Seahawks, like, wow, that's not easy. Uh, but, yeah, good for them. And I think they got the talent. And the way Carson Wentz is playing right yeah. now, the, the, they, they can make a comeback. they got a big test this week against the 49ers, for sure. And I think they match up pretty well with the 49ers. Mm. We'll see. Catching them at a good time. Yeah, catching them at a good time, maybe. I mean, I think, you know, again, I think the Colts' defense is pretty good. And if the Colts, you know, can, can run the ball a little bit effectively on the 49ers, as you could see, and the 49ers are a little bit one of those teams that go, wait, this is what we play. We're talented. Frank Reich's going to have some shot plays for you, and that's where the game could be interesting. Hey, Carson Wentz just had 20 yards of completion, and Taylor was 10 yards of rush. Yeah, so, I mean, right. it won't be that easy, but uh, it should be a pretty good game there Sunday night. No doubt. There's a show. That's a show. That's a show. I love when you say that. Yeah. It's not over until you say that. <laughs> it is It is officially. It's officially a yeah, show. It's yeah, in the books. Right. I'm in to get the clap it up thing. What's you, he do? You, he, we clap it up. Oh, there oh, I am. Look at Look ya. at that. Mr. 300,000. That's what I am. <laughs> <laughs> That's a nice suit that you, you have know, on there. You know, I'm bearing my chest. Got to show cape, my pecs. The cape is good, and that, that, that shark's tooth that yeah. you're wearing is good. But, oh, I mean, yeah. you look in very good shape. Right. Yeah. Yeah, this is business casual. Yep. 
and just holding Sweet my sword, you're holding, holding my sword there. just in case you get out of line. You never know. Yeah, you never know. Yeah, might have to chop some shit down. Never know. Good looking sword. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, all right, that's it. That's it for me and Paul Burmeister. Check out the Thursday podcast. It's the Chris Sims, Mike Florio, PFT, PM collaboration. Last week was just okay. Yeah. Just okay. Yeah. Yeah. Plenty I mean, of time. I, I know. Time. I know, but I'm not happy with myself. <laughs> so it's just okay with the picks. Uh, but check us out. Either way, you're going to get good information. I could tell you that. And I have had the leans on some some here and there. I just can't always pick the game to bet on. Mm. Damn, it drives me crazy. But check us out. Paul, you the man. Good to see you. Thanks to Under Armour. This is Chris Sims Unbuttoned, presented by Under Armour. We'll see you next time. Keep sending the questions, homies. Peace out. I won't match you next week with the color. Yo, yo, what's up? Come on, man. Subscribe on YouTube to Chris Sims Unbuttoned Podcast. I need you. Please hit the subscribe button. Please. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.